A lot of rehab programs include glute strengthening for proximal hamstring tendinopathy, and this makes a lot of sense because both the glutes as well as the proximal hamstring work to extend the hip. However, sometimes glute bridges are a painful exercise for those with proximal hamstring tendinopathy. And as a result, a frequent question that's asked is whether glute bridges are needed in a rehab program for proximal hamstring tendinopathy. In this video, we'll talk about the role of the glutes in proximal hamstring tendinopathy, as well as some alternative exercises to help strengthen the glutes. So the first thing is that glute bridges are not necessary for a rehab program for proximal hamstring tendinopathy. Like I was saying in the intro, the reason why they're typically included is that the glutes as well as the proximal hamstring both work to extend the hip. However, sometimes that movement is painful and it's either because the load is too much for the proximal hamstring tendon or it's because of the amount of hip flexion that's typically included with the glute bridge. So before changing out the glute bridge for a different exercise, we can actually see if we can modify the glute bridge to increase the tolerance to the exercise. The first modification is to have the feet out further away from you. This turns the glute bridge into more of a long lever bridge, which is going to load the hamstring a little bit more, but if it's hip flexion that is provocative, then it actually is going to help decrease the amount of hip flexion with the exercise. Conversely, depending on how you're actually doing the glute bridges, we can actually bring the feet closer to you a little bit, and that's going to help decrease the load on the hamstring tendon, but it's also going to increase the amount of hip flexion with the exercise. So it really depends on how you're performing the glute bridge on which modification might be useful. Along these same lines, we can actually change the rotation at the hip to get better activation of the glutes, which can help to decrease the irritation on that proximal hamstring tendon. So we can actually use an exercise band placed around the knees, and then when we're performing the glute bridge, we're going to push our legs out against that band, and that'll help to activate the glutes a little bit more, and it also puts the hip in a little bit more external rotation, which might be a helpful position. And while these modifications to the glute bridge can be helpful, sometimes the exercise is just too irritable for whatever reason. And so here are a couple alternative exercises that we can use instead of the glute bridge. For a tendon that's really sensitive to load, a great starting place is actually a plank. And while the plank is mostly known to be a core exercise, it's going to actually engage the glute muscles a little bit as well to keep you in that position. And the nice thing about a plank is that the hip is going to be in a neutral position, so this is usually pretty well tolerated. A progression to start incorporating a little bit of movement at the hip is to go into a quadruped position, so your hands underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hip, and then from this position, keeping your knee bent, we're going to extend the hip so that our foot is up towards the ceiling, and then back down to that original starting position. If we feel comfortable doing it, we can actually add a little bit of load using an exercise band to increase the challenge of this exercise. Additionally, if hip extension is still too painful with this exercise, then we can actually modify it so that our leg is going to go out to the side, turning it into a fire hydrant exercise. And so from this position, we're going to slowly lift that leg up to the side and then back down. Again, if we feel confident, we can add an exercise band as well to increase the resistance. And then the final exercise from this position is to extend the knee and then lift the leg up off the ground. And so this is just increasing the lever of the exercise, making it a little bit more challenging on those glute muscles, as well as the proximal hamstring tendon to lift the leg up into the air. And this transitions nicely into a standing hip extension with a band. Of course, these can also be performed with a cable machine if you have access to one. And then for some, even these exercises with the hip extension is a little bit too much for that tendon. And so what we can do is instead of working on hip extension, what we can do is add in some hip rotation instead that way we're slowly getting some more load on the glutes as well as that proximal hamstring tendon without going into too much hip extension. So here we can perform a side plank and depending on our tolerance, we can either perform them on our knees or on our feet with the feet obviously being a little bit harder because the lever is a little bit longer. And so this exercise is generally pretty well tolerated because we don't have to go into so much hip extension with this exercise and we're really just working on the glute as a hip abductor to hold us up in that neutral position. And then the progression here is to add a little bit more movement to the hip with the exercise. So we'll stay in that side lying position, but what we're gonna do is we're going to be on our knees here. And then from here, we're going to lift our hips up off the ground. And a progression that I like a lot with this is to actually go into a little bit of hip flexion at the bottom position. And then as we lift our hips up, extend our hips forward. And so now we're working not only hip abduction, but we're adding in a little bit of flexion and extension into the hip. And so it might feel a little bit awkward to do this exercise. And so make sure that your shins are perpendicular to the body because we wanna roll up over the shin as we lift our hips up. That'll typically help make this exercise a little bit more comfortable. 
and then finally progressing to a standing hip abduction exercise. And so initially we might actually use a furniture slider as we learn the movement and for a little bit of balance support. And so what we wanna do is we wanna slowly slide our foot out to our side and then back to that original starting position. With any of these exercises that we're performing with movement, we wanna perform them slowly. So generally over somewhere between six to eight seconds. So it's usually a three to four second contraction out and then a three to four second contraction back in. When we feel a little bit more comfortable with the exercise, then we can actually perform them with our foot just hovering over the ground so we're not using the furniture slider. And then the goal for the progression of this exercise is to actually slowly slide our foot out and back so that way we're getting a little bit more extension until we're actually just performing a standing hip extension exercise that's tolerated. As you can see, there are a lot of different exercises and approaches into incorporating some glute strengthening exercises for proximal hamstring tendinopathy. And there's not one exercise that needs to be included for the rehab of proximal hamstring tendinopathy. It's really about finding the exercise and movements that you feel like you're able to tolerate and then gradually build up from there. So hopefully this video on proximal hamstring tendinopathy was helpful. If it was, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And then I'll also leave another video for proximal hamstring tendinopathy rehab over here.